Howdy who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. I'm Tall Mike. I'm so glad you're here. Well, what do we got going on in the markets today? They continue to press up higher, right? So the Fed came out and they said they're still going to do three rate cuts, three rate cuts this year. All right, the market liked that, right? They got excited about it and they pushed the market up higher. New record high, new record high, new record high. Now the market's going to continue to go up until we break below the 20-day moving average. Until then, it's going to have this upward trajectory. Now will we get that 40,000 print on the Dow? It looks like we will. What are we, uh Hundred, maybe 200 points away, right? Maybe we get that today. But the market will press higher until we drop below the 20-day moving average. Now, what am I looking at? I'm looking at NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA is not making a new high. Now, if the market is going to continue to go higher, NVIDIA is going to have to make new highs. NVIDIA is the leader. If NVIDIA starts to break down, you're going to see the market come down with that. Now, we know that the Fed's going to cut rates three times. Okay, that's what they're saying. I don't actually believe that. I think it's going to be more like one or two times. But what I do believe is that the government's going to continue to spend an unlimited amount of money. And this is going to provide so-called liquidity to the market, which will send the market up high, right? Okay. So anyways, what we're looking for is a break of that 20-day moving average. I'm being patient. I'm not in the market. I'm missing this last three, four, five percent, however high it wants to go. I'm okay without that. I got my money in T-bills. I got my money in gold. And I'm just sitting back and waiting for the opportunity to come in and short the market. And that opportunity will present itself once we get below the 20 day. Just my take. Now, what I want to do is move over to the real estate market. I didn't get all that much hate for my last uh, episode. A lot of people had different comments. Some of the comments were great. Some of the comments, well, once again, there were a few haters. I got called a few names, you know, I'm just a grifter. Okay, I don't even know what that means. I think that's the word we all adapt to now when we don't agree with someone. He's just a grifter. Okay, maybe I am just a grifter. Another one says, you know, like they're not going to pay a realtor one cent. They're just going to do it all themselves. And that's what I advise people to do. You should sell the house yourself if you can. A lot of people cannot. But if you can, that's what you should do. Don't use a realtor. Save the 6%. Now the 6% is going to be coming down. Now if you listen to mainstream media, it's going to be coming down in half. Now I don't believe that. Maybe it comes down by a percent. Maybe it doesn't. But the mainstream media says half the realtors will go away and the commissions will get cut in half. Now what I did find out from a lot of the comments, a lot of people don't really understand purchasing power. Now purchasing power to me is common sense, right? Okay, so like for example, your house has gone up about 40%, right? During the pandemic, houses went up about 40%. But what really happened? Did the house really go up 40% or did you lose purchasing power. Well, in the last three years, we've lost 20% of our purchasing power. The dollar bill purchases 20% less stuff. And that's what pushed your house. Half of that 40% increase was just the loss of purchasing power. Okay. So what I talk about, which nobody else in mainstream media is really talking about, is that the buyer is losing purchasing power. You see, I've been a real estate broker for many, many years. And I understand that the buyer gets a mortgage, right? The buyer gets a mortgage. 80% of people that buy houses get a mortgage. All right, so that's cool. Well, most of these buyers, they stretch themselves to get the most house they can purchase. Let's say they want to purchase the million dollar home, right? And they got to have a 10% down payment. They wound, you know, round up all their money to get that $100,000 so they can get that million dollar house. And that's been great, right? Okay. And historically, now what people in the NAR settlement, $418 million settlement says that we cannot no longer finance the buyer's 
commission, right? The buyer's commission, he's got to pay for that now out of pocket. The seller can no longer finance that. So the buyer, the buyer has to come up with the commission to pay the real estate agent. Now, a lot of real estate agents, they're going to start to work like lawyers. They're going to put you on a retainer. You hire a real estate agent, you'll put them on retainer, $5,000 retainer, and he'll get the rest if he gets you a house. If he doesn't get you a house, well, he'll just keep the $5,000, I guess. But anyways, the buyer is going to have to pay their own representation. Now, he can represent himself. And if he wants to do that, if he knows how to do that, absolutely go for it. No problem, right? But a lot of buyers don't know how to represent themselves. They don't know how to get the house, how to get a purchase solved, how to solve the headaches of it, how to do the inspections, how to get the loan. They don't know all that, so they're going to need to hire representation. And they're going to have to pay with this out of their pocket. Now, in a million dollar house, typically in the old days, right, 6%, 3% each side. So the buyer agent would get 3%. Well, now let's say that the buyer has to come up with that 3%, a million dollar house. He's got to come up with 30000 But Mike, he's going to not pay him 30000 He's going to only give him half of that. All right, let's call it, let's say he does. Let's say he only gives him 15000 He still has to come up with that money. And it's probably going to be closer to 20000 But let's say he has to come up with that $20,000. He had to round up the 100000 for his down payment, but now he's got to come up with an extra 20000 Now, is he going to get a second mortgage to do that? I suppose that will be a possibility. That'll probably be a new industry where people finance the buyer for their commission. He'll get a $900,000 loan to buy the house, put his $100,000 down, and then he'll get a second mortgage to pay the agent. That's a possibility. But my point is, if he's got to come up with the money, he doesn't have the $100,000 to buy the house. So if he's got to give his agent $20,000, he only has $80,000, right? So he can only buy an $800,000 house. He lost $200,000 worth of purchasing power. And this is what's going to send the market down. So the sellers are also going to get hurt, but the buyer has lost purchasing power because he can no longer finance the commission. Now, maybe they do come up with a way where he gets a second mortgage on his house to pay the realtor. Okay, that's a possibility, right? All right. Now, a lot of people, the other comment that was very common is an insane amount of money a realtor makes. And I'll agree with that. It's insanity when you look at it just from one deal standpoint, right? All right. So you look at it from just one deal. I had a two and a half million dollar house, let's call it. And I sold it. It took me about five hours, made about 50000 about $10,000 an hour. And someone goes, isn't that amazing? A guy with an eighth grade education can go out and make $10,000 an hour. Well, actually, you don't even need an eighth grade education to do it. But yeah, that's correct. You don't need an education. That's what's great about real estate. You don't need any skill whatsoever. You just need to get your license. And I will argue that it's a great time to get a real estate license. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But if you just take a look at it from that one house, that's an insane amount of money. Now, how many houses did I go out and talk to and try to get that I didn't get the listing appointment? Well, right now, none. So it's great for me. But when I was in the business and actively working, trying to get the listings, I'd go on listing appointment after listing appointment after listing appointment. And, you know, I'd be losing to the Keller Williams guy. I'd be losing to the, you know, the Remax guy. I'd be losing out to a lot of the other ones that were interviewing against me. You have to go on these interviews. So it's a lot more involved than you think. And from a buyer's agent perspective, I gave that up a long time ago, but you got it. Go show so many properties, maybe 30, 40, 50 properties just to get one sale. And that's a lot of work. I'm telling you, it's not easy. And then it's really frustrating when they go and buy it from someone else. But right now, the market's changing, right? Everything's changing. The seller doesn't have to pay the buyer agent starting in July. And that's where the houses are going to start to come down. That's where the housing crash is going to start to happen. Now, it's going to take a while to play out. Like everybody's going to be July 1st. Mike, there's no crash yet. And there's not going to be a crash on July 1st. Could be, but probably not. 
takes time to play out. Give it a year from now. Um, starting this July, they'll start coming down 20, 30 percent. Because why? Because the buyer has lost purchasing power. Okay, so my point here is that a lot of people get upset that the real estate agent makes so much money. He comes in, sells the house, he's out of there with his check, right? And they say, well, you didn't spend any time doing it. And I ask, well, you see, my clients, my clients love me. I mean, they, they're hugging me after we're high-fiving each other. I mean, they love me, right? Because I got the job done. Now, if it took me a year to do that job, well, maybe the 50000 would be more justified. But would you want to pay someone to, you know, more money? Like 50000 is okay if they took a year or two to sell your house. Would that be better than me doing it in five hours? No, they pay me for the result. I get paid for the result. So if I take a year or if I take two years or if I take five hours, all my clients, I guarantee you, would rather have me do it in five hours than take a year or two to do it. Now, if you go in a lot of places around the world, it takes a year or two to sell a property. Why? Because they don't have a million and a half agents trying to sell the same house. They don't have a multiple listing service in place like we have now. They're a third world country. I know people, they invest, they invest in, a, you know, in other countries, Costa Rica, uh, Colombia, wherever. It's great when you're buying because you can find some really good deals. You find a house you like, you just put an offer in 30, 40% less. They will probably take it because they haven't even heard of an offer coming in in the last year. But when you go to sell that, it's going to take you a year plus to unload that property. What this also does in other countries makes it so that corporations don't come in and buy because it's not an efficient system, right? I mean, even though the corporation can go in and get the property 30% off market value, they have no way to sell it. They have no way to get rid of it. No way to turn a profit. Don't worry, though. This new ruling by the NAR, they're turning us into the third world country. The public thinks they've won in this case. The public has not won. The buyers are losing. The sellers are losing. And our system is not going to be as efficient as it was before. Now, a lot of people don't understand it. Who do I think is going to lose out? I think a lot of the big agencies, a lot of them probably won't make it. A lot of them will probably go on out of business. Maybe a Keller Williams, maybe a Caldwell Banker, maybe a Central 21. I don't know. You see, a commission is split four ways. When you sell a million dollar house, the seller used to pay the 60000 in the commission, right? Now, everybody thinks, well, that agent, he made all that money. No, he really didn't. You see, 30000 to each side, right? And then you have your broker, and then you have the agent that sold it. So 15000 to the broker, 15000 to the agent. So if the agent is lucky enough to sell a million dollar house, he made $15,000. And that explains why the average agent makes less than $50 thousand dollars a year but the agents are going to get a raise now and i explained that in my last video but i'll explain why in a different way how they're going to get a raise in this video but you're going to have a lot of realtors dropping out because well because a lot of the big companies probably go out of business now a lot of people say that half the realtors are going away i think it'll be closer to 20 or 30 percent of the realtors were going away right now we have about let's call it a million and a half in the national association of realtors and maybe it drops down to a million. Now what are the other 500,000 agents going to do? Well, they're going to be fighting for the fast food jobs. Now fast food jobs in California, we're paying $20 an hour right now, which is more than the average real estate agent makes. So a $20 an hour job when he gets into fast food will actually be an increase in his pay. But there's actually a bill on the table right now for $50 an hour. $50 an hour to work in fast food. It's actually a real bill in California that's on the table right now. Maybe it'll pass. We can close all the fast food restaurants too. They'll all go out of business because you can't afford $50 hamburgers. But anyways, the commission split four ways. Most agents don't make very much. So you're going to have these big brick and mortar places going out. Now, I've always been a, a, a saying that you don't need a brick and mortar place to sell real estate. You really don't. Okay, there's companies like a lot of you probably aren't familiar with them, but EXP, they're an online company, right? They're a, 
a virtual uh, real estate brokerage. All their agents work out of their home. I work out of my house. I don't have an office. I used to have an office, and it was ridiculous. Go to the office, everything I want's at home. Go be at home, everything I want's in the office. I just said, hey, easier to work out of my house. And I've been doing that for most of my career. So you don't really need the brick and mortar place. So I do expect those to go under with this new ruling. So I do think that will happen. But you see, the thing is, I tell people, hurry up, get your real estate license right now. Here's why. Here's why. All right. We've got 30% of the agents that are going to be quitting, right? So we're down to a million agents. Now, right now, there's a very low amount of transactions, very low amount. But right now, the number of transactions is going to be picking up. Now, why do I say that? Because the price of houses is going to be coming down. Once people see the price of houses dropping 10, 20, 30 percent, there's going to be a tsunami, tsunami of inventory flooding the marketplace. So you got 30 percent less realtors. You got way more transactions. True, the prices will be a little bit lower, but still a great time to be a real estate agent. But you don't even have to get your license. A real winners in this is going to be the i buyers these are going to be people like the corporations people are starting these companies now if you watch uh, what what channels you meet meet kevin a lot of you probably watch his channel he's a real estate broker stock market guy anyways young guy very energetic ran for governor of california very energetic guy okay but anyways he's starting his own company called some house hack or something anyways all he's doing is like taking unaccredited investors putting their pool and their money together so they can go out and buy houses because he he sees the writing on the wall he knows that houses will come down 20 30 i'm saying 40 percent, but that's going to take a little time not going to happen on july 1st like a lot of people People are thinking, but we'll start to come down at that point when you stop paying the buyer agents. See, the buyer agents are the ones that get it sold, and those are the ones that you want to wipe out. Who's the big winner? Lawyers, 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 lawyers. Lawyers are the big winner. I mean, let me tell you why. Well, first of all, they got 35% of that $418 million settlement, and I still cannot find out where the rest of that money goes. But anyways, lawyers are the big winners. See, what? not only did they get 35% of that they're going to get more real estate cases because that buyer is going to oh he's going to mess things up i was almost going to swear i don't like to swear but anyways he's going to mess up the transaction right so there's going to be so many lawsuits coming because he's going to be representing himself and once he finds out he's the bag holder he's going to be angry he's going to bring the lawsuit right and he's going to get the lawyers and there's going to be so many lawsuits even when i talk about being a dual agent and representing both sides that creates more lawsuits. Typically, what I do is I refer the buyer out. I don't work with buyers, but I have a lot of starving agents out there that would love me to give them business. So I split it 50-50. 50-50. Now, a lot of you think that's an unfair split. I got agents standing in line to split 50-50 with me anytime I hand them a buyer because they know that buyer is going to be buying the house I have for sale. I go, here, can you help this buyer? Because I do not really want to be a dual agent, so I'll just take half of that buyer commission. Now, okay, now that buyer is going to be paying that agent out of his pocket, right? So the purchasing power goes down, the house prices go down, and it's just going to be a bad thing for the public. Public think they won, man. You should read some of the comments. Real estate agents are toast. You're just a grifter, tall Mike. You are just one of those agents that just Drifting through life. That's what we us real estate brokers do. Now, I know that a lot of people hate us. Yeah, a lot of people hate brokers. And, and for good reason. You know, we get an insane amount of money in their eyes. In their eyes. In our eyes, we make less than the guy working at McDonald's, getting your coffee, getting your Big Mac and fries. And that's where most real estate agents are going. The ones that can't get hired, they'll probably just go be Uber drivers. But that's how it'll play out. And I know I got a little carried away here. This went a a little bit longer than usual, but we got the weekend ahead. Everybody give me the thumbs up first before the weekend. Get out to everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll talk again next week. Punch that subscribe button. Bye-bye now.